Hey, just a quick heads up that there will be spoilers in this review. If for some reason you want to play this terrible game, then shut the video off because pretty much the entire game is going to be spoiled in this review. Each bold leap forward was achieved by those willing to do anything to attain it. We are all of us leaving behind families, homes, the very birthplace of our species. Mass Effect Andromeda is one of the most offensively dull and uninteresting games I have ever played. There was absolutely no reason for this game to exist. Every second of this game felt like someone was asleep at the wheel during development and just shipped whatever they had. Every single ounce of this game was subpar in one way or another. Starting off with the gameplay, this is probably Mass Effect's best feature, but that isn't saying much. Mass Effect Andromeda is a third person cover shooter. That's about it. It doesn't do anything interesting with the genre. It's just a third person cover shooter. If you've played a game that fits the same description, then you've played Mass Effect Andromeda. The gameplay is painfully mediocre at best. At worst, it's like you've teleported back to the year 2007 where knee-high walls were all the rage and being able to take cover was seen as a genuinely interesting concept. What I'm trying to say is that this game isn't exactly going to be remembered for how it revolutionized the third-person cover shooter genre. Honestly though, this was a game that was released in 2017 and supposedly took five years to develop. Even the most bland, forgettable games have attempted to do something with the genres they were sticking to. Remember Quantum Break? Of course you don't, but even that game attempted to do some interesting things with the third person shooter concept. So if a game that forgettable and inoffensive tried, then why couldn't Mass Effect Andromeda? Why release a game with gameplay straight out of the early Xbox 360 era? I mean, if this were 2007 and Gears of War hadn't come out yet, then we'd have something real special on our hands here. But it's not. It's 2017, and the third person shooter has evolved. It's ironic that such a futuristic game is so stuck in the past. Then there's the mess of a story this game has. So, humanity has decided to go to another galaxy for some reason, cause we could I guess. Only when we get there, we find out that everything has gone wrong. Half the ships didn't show up for some reason or another, and the Citadel equivalent got brutalized by some disease. Oh, and also there's a super weapon that an ancient race is trying to get to wipe out all who oppose them in their attempts to turn the galaxy's inhabitants into super beings or whatever. This game tries to juggle about five different plot points at any given time, and it goes over about as well as you'd expect it to. The best part of all of this though is that it tries to fit in all of these points into a 12 hour story. You want to know what that disease that destroyed the whole Nexus was about? Me too! Or how about the fact that there's some ancient robot race that has immense powers the likes of which we have never seen before? Wait, wait a second, that sounds familiar. I'm sure it's nothing. There's no way a company that's put out such literary tour de forces like Dragon Age 2 and Mass Effect 3 would reuse basic plot elements like that. Nah, it's just gotta be my imagination. But getting back on point here, the writing in this game is a train wreck. The game hops from plot point to plot point, and it never puts in any effort to explain anything it was just going on about. Essentially, this entire game was designed around the fact that the developers expected the players to do practically all of the side content and read every codex entry to get basic answers about the game's plot and its world. Now, I'm no Shakespeare, but that seems like poor writing to me. The game was also a technical disaster. Before even playing the game, I encountered three distinct technical issues that I had never once come across in my decade plus of PC gaming. The first was how the game managed to kill my monitor in a way that required me to unplug, then plug it back in. The second was how it switched my computer's default audio source, and then, once I had figured out those two head scratchers, the audio itself was completely garbled and full of distortion. After about an hour of doing some of the most bizarre troubleshooting I'd ever had to do, I finally got the game to run well. What was I greeted with after that grueling hour of tech issues? Well, none other than multiple second long loading hitches, half finished animations, and a game that felt as if it were going to fall apart at the slightest breeze. I guess now that I brought those animations up I should talk about those too. Yeah, they're about as bad as you'd expect them to be from all the gifts and the videos floating around. 
Sarah Ryder behaves in a way that I don't think any human, no matter how exceptionally socially damaged they are, ever would. Random grimaces in the middle of a conversation, unmoving robotic eyes, inability to maintain eye contact, it's like a primitive AI took its best shot at making a human being and put it into a video game. Of course, it's not just Sarah, it's every NPC in this game, minus the Archon. It was actually like night and day seeing the Archon and Sarah talk to one another. It's like the team over at Bioware finished the first draft of all the characters' animations, then moved on to finalizing them all. But they only got through Archon, the before moving on to anyone else by the time EA came in with his massive swinging money dick and forced them to ship the game. But that's not even the worst of it. The thing I found to be the most offensive about this game was how half-hearted it was with its attempt to break away from the previous games. Obviously, the original trilogy is beloved by many, so when you introduce a new game years later, it's going to be hard to convince people to give up their beloved story in the sake of experiencing something new. Mass Effect Andromeda went about this in just about the worst way possible. Instead of cutting ties completely and severing this game from the rest of the franchise, which is what you'd expect considering the entire premise of the game is going to a new galaxy, but anyways, back on topic here. Instead of Mass Effect Andromeda severing ties completely and doing its own thing, it keeps a lot of the old games in it, while sort of also introducing some new stuff. The issue when you do this is that instead of just focusing on one thing or the other, you're now doubling the effort you have to undergo to keep that balance. So not only do you have to focus on keeping the old stuff in line with previous entries, but now you have entirely new variables thrown into the mix that you have to establish and flesh out while also maintaining the consistency of the older stuff. Basically, it's not surprising that this game turned into as big of a mess as it was with this sort of approach. This is around the point where I'd try to bring up the positives of a game. Only, there aren't any positives with this game, just things that weren't as bad as everything else. For example, the game isn't hideous, it's the best looking game in the series, but it's still not a technically impressive game. The gameplay is also at least functional, even if it's exceptionally dull and uninspired. Then there's also the Archon, who was the only character who I actively enjoyed listening to and interacting with. But that's only one character out of hundreds, so that's not looking too good either. Really, this is just a bad game. It's a waste of time and money, and you aren't missing out on anything by not playing this game. Watch the funny YouTube clips, watch the negative reviews, get a good laugh out of it, and then move on with your life. This game is not worth much more than that. Overall, this game is a 1 out of 5. Dull, uninventive gameplay, a disaster of a story, horrible technical issues, and a lack of commitment made this game actively unenjoyable. It's like Bioware looked at everything people hated about all of their previous games, took all of that, and slapped it into a big mixing bowl labeled Mass Effect Andromeda. This game is a waste of money, a waste of time, and is one of the worst games I've had the misfortune of spending my free time on.